Commission's Affordable Housing Commission to order on Friday, October 23rd, 2020. Uh, at current count, we have four members present uh, with one expected to join shortly. So we do not have quorum at the moment. Uh, so we will um, postpone the disposition of minutes until we have a quorum uh, available to us. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the introduction of individuals who have agreed to serve on this commission. And that would be Molly Fitzgerald and Hannah Gilkey. Molly, I know is present. Uh, Hannah, are you available right now? I don't think so. Sarah, can you hear us now? I, I can hear you. We can I don't hear know you. how to... <laughs> Good. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Can you hear I, me? I hear you, Michelle. Yep. You can probably hear all of us. Yeah, I think it was so weird. I could hear everyone for like two seconds, and then all the sound would just uh, just cut out when when I was on my computer. And so, Sarah, we we um we do have quorum now since you're as long as you're still present. Uh, we have a quorum of five. Um, with the current body of nine members. So quorums have been established. Uh, I, I had skipped disposition of minutes. However, uh, since we do have quorum, if we wanna jump back, we can do that. And then we can start on item three. And I can hand it back over to you, Sarah. Can you hear us, Sarah? Hmm. Poor Sarah, she's having a time of it. Yeah, happens to all of us. So Molly, for your, just for your edification, Molly, this typically doesn't happen, um, but as, you, as we all know, sometimes we do have uh, problems with our technology. Um, Sarah's not the only one in that boat, of course. Um, also, it's a good time to point out the um, uh, the digital divide that we experience in Southeast Ohio. So, um, and I know Molly's been active on that. Um, Molly, do you want to jump in for a moment, maybe introduce yourself to members who don't know you? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I hope you all can hear me. I shouldn't be having any technical difficulties, but um, Molly Fitzgerald, I'm the newly appointed executive director of the Athens County Economic Development Council. So I've, I've taken over for Sarah Mars Maxfield and I am um, taking her position on this uh, commission. So I'm really looking forward to working with everybody. And I will, I guess uh, I can't pass it off to, to um, Hannah, but I look forward to, to meeting her as well. Okay. Hi. Hi. I can hear people again. Um, oh, wow. You're lucky, girl. <laughs> the strangest um, Zoom I've ever tried to do. Um, and yes, Hannah Gilkey is the branch manager um, for the, the Court Street People's Bank. And she has graciously enjoyed, um, agreed to volunteer, though, with the short notice of this meeting, she was not available today. Um, and both Molly and Hannah will be officially appointed by council. Um, I, I can't imagine any objections, um, but at our, our next full meeting of council, which will be um, a week from Monday. Um, so um, maybe next time um, with both of them being new, we can all go around the table and introduce ourselves. We'll wait till next time when they both are available. That's thank you, Michelle. I, I agree. I think that's a great idea. We can um, do sort of introductions. And also, I think it might be helpful to have a, um, a quick glance over the role and function and duties of this commission. Um, and so that was uh, something that I thought would, would probably be good to do at our, um, our next meeting once we have our, our two new members and we're back up to a full um, 11 members of this commission. So um, have we approved the minutes from, <laughs> okay, <That's right. laughs> thank, you. thank you for uh, your, everyone's patience. Um, did anyone have any comments, questions, or concerns about uh, regarding the minutes from uh, September's meeting? Okay, I was so grateful to have the video to go back and look watch <laughs> as I typed up the minutes. Um, so uh, if, if I could please have a, a motion to approve those minutes. 
I'll make a motion to approve and the minutes as submitted. Thank you, Paul. And a second? Second. Thanks, Joyce. Okay, and all in favor? Vote by aye. 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 Hi, Noah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, then I just quickly wanted to give everyone a, a brief update uh, because we were talking about the uh, two new housing developments at um, our, our last commission meeting. I just wanted to um, update on council's action um, to move that process along. And um, on October 19th, council did vote to authorize the creation of um, this uh, incentive district for the TIF for the University of States uh, development. And we had um, back in, in August, there was an, um, uh, an ordinance to amend the um, description of the parcels, um, but we, we have approved um, the, the mayor entering into the agreement for the annexation of um, the, the property. Uh, for the Woda Cooper um, development. And hopefully that is um, progressing along the, um, it, with, with the other organizations that need to um, take action on that. But, but council has um, completed those steps. So hopefully um, those things are, are moving in the right direction. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments on those? Was it an anonymous or an anonymous, unanimous vote? Yes, uh, I I believe so on both. Okay, um, both issues. There's, okay. Um, yeah, I think ev everyone everyone feels very uh, favorable about steps um, to to increase um, the the number and um, availability of affordable housing units in the city, um, and I I think that that these two developments ad address different needs and um, different potential um, residents. Um, but I, th I think that's, that's a good thing. Um, so the, um, any other thoughts or questions about those things? Sir, I would just point out that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on both of them. Um, as, as including with that annexation, uh, you know, we're, we're still having to work with the, pro the developer uh, to do site plan review and make sure that we've got all the infrastructure issues and zoning and all of those things all lined up as far as the, the actual details of their project. Uh, we have been working closely with them on that. And same should go for um, the uh, University of States TIF project. Um, we, the the action that happened, if I'm not mistaken, on Monday was just authorizing uh, the contract for the for the TIF to be established, and then for um, the developer in the city to um, to sign on the de uh, development agreement. And so that'll be taking place on Tuesday, I believe, okay. um, between uh, Chief Pyle as acting safety director and the developer, um, so that we can move that forward to the Secretary of State as required under um, Ohio Revised Code. Uh, once that's all established, the uh, the developer will still need to be provide sheets to the city and detailed drawings and all of that, and we'll still be going through our development review process with them. So there is still more to follow with both of those projects. It's not, um, uh, but uh, they're both moving forward, which is a good thing. And a lot of uh, the reason I think both of those things have happened are because of the work of this commission and the advocacy that you've all done. And um Michelle, to your credit, of course, for putting this together in the first place. So thank you for doing that. Um, it's, it's, it has really helped, bottom line. Um, what I wanted to make sure, I was glad to hear that the development process and review is still continuing, Paul, and that what I really liked about your notes, Sarah, is that you talked about bedrooms on the first floor. This is the University of States one. Mm -hmm. All those accessible features, um, that Noah has always reminded us about as well, and everybody is super aware of these days. But, you know, those key pieces, and I just remember back from my Board of Zoning Appeals days where you would approve something, you would give the variance, or you would say, well, we have to, well, we want it this way, and then it never happened. So I think as a city, you know, 10, 12 years later, we're much better with Paul Logue on, on board as well 
with being able to uh, monitor that what we said at the beginning happens at the final uh, piece and that everything is what people say they are going to do. Because, of course, developers get into situations, they start running out of money, things change, whatever happens, and then little things get pulled away, right? So um, thank you, Paul, for staying on things. And obviously, I think having all these commissions and all these different things that people are involved in has really made a huge uh, impact, whether it's the Disabilities Commission or this commission or whoever it is that we're staying up on stuff, you know, so that it really actually happens in the end. Okay. Yeah. I, I appreciate that too. And while sometimes it feels like um, things don't move quickly enough, I'm actually, I'm, in a, I'm glad that there's still a lot of review happening um, because it, it is important that um, when the, the city is working with a developer um, and specifically has some goals for affordable housing that, that then as Michelle said, that, that those, those are actually met, that, that there's um, this, the agreements between the city and, and um, the developers that to ensure that, um, that some, some of, of the goals put forward well, from this commission, from the disability commission um, in, in the, uh, city's plan um, are act actually achieved. And so it's, um, thank you for the, the update and the, the comments on that, Michelle. And um, one thing, uh, the, next, the next agenda item that I um, put on here was um, a discussion of work to examine our local housing code and zoning through a racial equity lens. And this is something that um, I, as a, a member of city council, am doing um, uh, as, as I think about what our work here in the Affordable Housing Commission and um, my work on council and as um, chair of uh, city and safety services and as a member of uh, planning, uh, the planning committee on council too, um, some, the, some of my responsibilities as a council member and as a member of this commission are to, to be actively reviewing our, our city housing code and our zoning policies. And, um, so I just, I wanted to bring that forward here in this commission and, um, over the summer, um, I, I brought forward a resolution in city council um, declaring racism a public health crisis. And um, I, I felt that that was important um, because of, of my background in, in public health. And um, it's an important time to be examining sort of how we as cities interact with all of our residents and what we could be doing to be actively anti-racist. And so I just wanted to share with the commission that um, a section of that resolution is that Athens City Council is committed to review um, a review of all portions of the Athens City Code with a racial equity lens and conducting all human resources, vendor selection, and grant management activities with a racial equity lens, including reviewing all internal policies. Um, and so then as part of the powers and duties of this commission, we have... Um, to review and make recommendations to the Athens city government on policies and procedures relating to housing issues, including but not limited to zoning plan and implementation and housing code and enforcement services are just two of the items on that list. And so for me as a council member serving on this commission, um, I, I feel like it, it's sort of important to bring these things all together um, and addressing affordable housing um, part of, of what has, has created a, a significant um, racial divide in this country has been housing policies and zoning. And um, so I just wanted to um, take this time to put out there that, that that's something that I, I am personally interested in, in working on. And um, it, I know um, 
Paul has, has a, a much, much better understanding and um, knowledge and has, has thought a lot about zoning within our city. Um, but when, when I, I do research looking at recommendations from organizations of, of things that cities can do to, um, to a, address some of this racial disparity and, and to improve racial equity, um, one, one of the top recommendations that comes out is, is really to look carefully at our, our zoning. Um, because a, a lot of zoning in cities um, was was put in place uh, really to um, protect um, and and build sort of some some wealthier neighborhoods, which then has an exclusionary um, role. So I just wanted to um, speak to this commission on that and and ask if if anyone one is is um, has thoughts on specific work that we. As, as an affordable housing commission um, should look at whether there are recommendations that could come from this commission regarding zoning changes. Um, but obviously that has to come officially from planning, um, but, but that could be part of the work of this commission. And- Is uh, that what you call being an influencer? Would we be influencers? <laughs> Yeah, may, um, maybe not on Twitter. But, um, yeah. uh, Paul, Paul, do you remember when we went to the groundwater training? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sarah, um, were you there? I don't know. Oh, yeah. okay. The one okay. At, at Stewart's? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, I, I want to say that I think both of the um, – the, the new developments that we've been talking about are, are utilizing some of this because uh, for university of states, um, everything um, like, you know, where it has, and, and for the Woda Cooper, the zoning has to allow for multifamily dwellings. And, and so um, I just wonder if, if something, if, if it would be valuable for the city to consider something more comprehensive um, rather than a project by project approach. And so that's. that's I think it is written up in our value statements and our mission statements, because so much of this stuff is already embedded in law, but people have figured out how to get around it. Let's just be honest, right. <laughs> you know, the redlining and some of this stuff that's happened different places. I mean, uh, private industry or whoever banking, whatever they figured out how to get around it, you know? So as a city, obviously we have to, you know, I think about what's going on with the uh, Athens County cop watch or whatever, you know, there are people who are saying, okay, you say you're doing all these things. Are you really doing those things? Mm -hmm. And um, so I, 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 you know, this off the top of my head, that's what I'm kind of thinking, you know, it's, I don't, we don't need another commission, I don't think, or anything like that, but um, maybe pulling a couple commissions together, you know, I don't know, to have that conversation or to, to sh so there's, so it shows that we're actually having an intellectual conversation about these issues, because so much of it is embedded in law now, but how, are, are you guys following me? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Totally agree, Michelle. Yeah. And part, part of that resolution also includes language for the mayor to establish, I think it's called a task force. Um, and one conversation that I had with the mayor, we discussed, you know, how applicable, um, you know, our affordable housing commission discussions and work is to addressing you know, racism within um, that is embedded in law, as well as um, we already have the joint um, police, um, JPAC, um, the advisory council. And so we had talked about possibly um, sort of a, just like on, on other projects, we've had review and support from say the, uh, the disability commission and the sustainability commission, um, pulling together members of the different existing commissions 
to to each be a voice in in the in addressing racism looking at that area within the city whether it's housing or law enforcement or um so um anyway that's um and i would think that we don't have to reinvent the wheel i'm guessing like with the groundwater approach that training we went to i'm guessing there's something already established out there depending on which group you're looking at, whether Black Lives Matter or municipalities for Black Lives Matter or something, I'm get, you guys get all that uh, municipality literature from different city, 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 state, you know, federal government, that kind of stuff that it seems to me there might be already something that is kind of like, and maybe you looked at this when you did your resolution too, Sarah, I don't know when you wrote it up, but it seems like with everything happening right now, that there's probably some good models of what to follow, you know, I don't, I don't know, but. Sarah, Sarah, I liked, or just your comment about um, the, the ordinance or the resolution talking about having um, a task force. Um, would that be something that council would create or the mayor or I mean, it's, it's I'd a, be interested in. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, it's the resolution um, asked the mayor to establish a working group to promote racial equity throughout the okay. city. Yeah. Um, I, and okay. So and I think, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'll, I'll, I'll um, uh, you know, I think just like mo all or most people on here, I think this is something um, incredibly um, important for us to be working on. Um, maybe one of the more important things we can actually work on, if not the most important thing. I'm happy to touch base with Mayor Patterson and see if he's if he's open minded to us kind of convening some sort of a task force on this issue um, as it relates specifically to to zoning and housing code and development. Um, and then um, I probably Sarah having you and Mayor Patterson and myself, if uh, you all want me involved trying to figure out who should be on that task force. But Michelle mentioned like zoning, somebody it does seem like uh, one or two members of the city's planning commission, a member or two from this commission, and then um, uh, probably some citizens and uh, maybe our law director or somebody being um, involved with that. And of course, a, a member or two of council to start working on that. I don't think it's something, it, definitely something we would need to kind of go slow and really better understand the issue um, right. and strategies that we can do. Uh, a lot of cities are grappling with this right now, um, which is um, uh, no better time than now. If we haven't been grappling with it in the past, let's, 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 oh, let's take care of it. Um, um, and we'll get complicated to M Michelle. I think you said that too, you know, it's law and, and we all know zoning changes and things like that are uh, once you have a law in the books, it is, they can be very, very hard to change, and they're very rigid and sometimes intractable political situations. But um, uh, it is something we should, I, I think, we should be starting on. Um, I would recommend just, and I'll, and then I'll shut up. Um, I actually have a copy of the book right here. But if you haven't read it, um, "The Color of Law" by Richard Rothstein, um, it, it does break down the 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 history of what you know how racial segregation came to happen in the United States. Um, and it, it, you know, it is it makes a very compelling argument and legitimate argument that it, it was it, it was a legal framework, um, both at the state, federal and local level. It was elected officials making decisions, many of which are in viol clear violation of the Civil Rights Act, um, which got us to this point. And um, it is just, you know, and so untangling that is what we need to do. And it's, it is complicated. But um, uh, the argument is compelling. If you don't want to read the book um because it is a you know we've got a lot on our plates i i have seen a 10 or 15 minute uh, video summary that uh richard rostein did about it i can i'll find that and share it it's a really good um and dynamic video to watch um and i've heard him speak a few times and it's um uh the the timeline of what happened and how it happened is really is really um i'm uh currently reading through a book called cast c-a-s-t-e Mm -hmm. by the woman who wrote the Pulitzer Prize book on the migration when everybody moved up from the South into the North, um, people of color. So 
um, cast is really, it's, it sounds very similar to this book you're talking about um, in terms of she's laying it all out, how this happened, you know, very uh, structurally. And that was more my comment when I made earlier about we have these laws in place to stop discriminatory behavior, but people have figured out how to get around them. Right. So, you know, um, for profit usually. So, um, or whatever, but um, that seems to be the, what r- rules everything <laughs> is profit. Yeah. Um you know, and Molly as the economic development person now, you 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 know that that's how do you balance all that out? How do you balance a community's values and missions and you know um, culture um, with money, right? And those sometimes there's there's a lot of arguing that goes on there. So um, that's exactly yeah. right. It's a fine balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, when you drive in on our Stimson Avenue roundabout now and you see all that we're an inclusion city and we're, you know, you got all the little, I actually look at those stupid things, but they're, they're all there to say something about your community. And you remember in the old days, there were other things that were exclusionary that were on those entrances to cities. Right. So, um, you know, anyways, yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. yeah, Paul, I, I definitely appreciate your thoughts on um, sort of that working group and some act, some members. Um, I just after the resolution passed, a, a couple of uh, community members reached out to me and said, you know, boy, once this gets organized, I would really like to serve. And um, so I... Um, Sounds like you got a, a group already. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that it... It's interesting because, and, and, and very complicated um, because some of the things that, that members of different uh, neighborhoods in Athens have really come to think of as, as sort of neighborhood community values um, may very well have started out to be exclusionary. And how do we balance um, uh, untangling that or how, how do we make things better um, moving forward from here. The, um, the one other thing uh, I wanted to mention that I came across in my research is something that, that could um, be beneficial for addressing this um, is to what, what is called scale up small area fair market rents. And I don't know if that's something that is um, possible or could possibly be done here in the city, but it's, um, I know it's something that's happened in Dallas, obviously much, much larger area, but where the, um, the HUD assigned value of housing is tied to much smaller geographic areas. So that adjusts the, um, the voucher allowance based on smaller areas and so that, that's something that, that has to be worked through HUD. So, um, but I, it's something I wanted to put out there because the housing, I know that, that it's a, a significant issue in, in the city of Athens and, and even throughout the county, um, availability of housing that qualifies for voucher assistance. And it is um, something, something that I, have researched and said, yes, I'm in support of and we bring this forward in council is a, um, to, to prohibit uh, source of income based discrimination. So where a, a landlord or property owner could say, I don't accept housing vouchers as the source of income. Um, and I, I still may, may bring that forward as an ordinance, but the problem is it won't change the reality in the city of Athens because the rent is just too high, so they they don't qualify. They're priced out. So well, I I've been trying to think creatively and do research to find out well what could possibly be done to improve access to rental housing for people who are who do qualify for housing vouchers and assistance um, within the city because it's just there there are benefits and some individuals really prefer to live within the city just access to services and transportation and 
Um, so we know that, that the housing market is, is very different within city limits than other places in the county. And so that's just something that I thought. Um, and I'll probably bring it up at our next meeting when um, our uh, um, housing director person. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, she was planning to attend and then um, emailed this morning that she was ill. And I, there's one a phone call in listener that that may be um, from from that office. So I'm not sure. Um, because I was, um, I got the email saying that they could not zoom in, um, but uh, could participate by uh, by phoning in. And um, I, I want to, yeah. So that may be Erica from MHA on the phone listening in. <laughs> um, but yeah, I it so is, Sarah. Okay, thank thanks, Paul. Um, I I wanted to mention something because I noticed it was blowing up on Facebook last night um, about all the letters just went out for the new appraisals for everybody's property. I assume everybody's gotten them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, other people that I obviously know who live out somewhere in Athens County, they were like freaking out because their amounts had gone up considerably. And obviously, this is the appraisal. We don't know what the tax will be, you know, yet. So, you know, I just made a brief comment. Or we're talking about appraisal here. And then the taxes will be figured out over that. But um, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but people were like losing it, you know, that I have never even done anything to my house. How is this? You know, and I don't know if this is, you know, this happens periodically, but it sounds like it was a bigger push right now. I don't, I, I, I don't know, but I don't know if that's something, you know, it's just out there. I just brought it up, whatever. Well, it was interesting because we just recently had a bank appraisal done of, of our property and the value went down compared to the last appraisal done Whoa. by the bank for, for financing it's um, decreased and that's based on um, like um, mm -hmm. comparative properties they look at. And so then it's interesting to get the, um, the letter from the County saying, Oh, <laughs> your appraisal has gone up. Uh, so I, I was, um, I haven't, I haven't been on uh, Facebook to see, um, yeah. but yeah, that is, um, I'm not sure how that process is done or what, how that um, I've recently learned uh, quite a bit because I'm the chair of the gathering place uh, board <laughs> and we just had a reappraisal be well, not a reappraisal. That's incorrect because when we purchased Mike's bridge house, which was, you know, a rental prior to that, and they had this huge uh, evaluation of 700,000 on that building. And then we got into a big thing with the school district. We're still not worked out with the state yet. Uh, the state hasn't come finally through that. Yes, we are a not-for-profit and blah, 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 and all that. You have to, you know, appeal to the state on that. But there was, we made kind of a deal with the, because um, there's that board, what's that board called that meets um, the auditor and the board of oh, revision. Yes. And so we, we were able to avoid going to that board and we kind of made a deal that with the school superintendent, I mean, it's all about board, but the bottom line is that we would pay mm -hmm. this until this other thing comes through and, and all of that. But yeah, I've learned a total, a lot about how that whole process works um, and paying taxes. And as a not-for-profit, of course, when you have to pay a huge tax, that's a huge thing out of your budget. So um, many of you know Ginger Schmollenberg, so she's the executive director. She's done a great job. But, um, yeah, there was a lot to deal with with that. So, yeah, these evaluations are really very interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I guess this, this conversation kind of falls under the announcements and other business <laughs> item of our <laughs> – of our agenda we're kind of talking about other things related to housing costs and affordability um are there any other um announcements or other business that people would like to bring 
too. I'm ready to go because I got a text from my son who says, get over here right now. And that means I get to meet my first grandchild. They were just <laughs> really Congratulations. from the hospital. So <laughs> they were there a few more days. They had the baby on Tuesday. So, um, uh, yeah. So they're like, you know, and with COVID and everything, we haven't been able to, to see the baby. So Charlie is his name. So <laughs> well, yeah. awesome, congratulations. Yeah. Do, you have a, do you have an official title? Uh, I'm Anya. Anya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, That's a Hungarian, like Grammy, Grammy, grandma, just, you know, a Hungarian name. Yeah. Well, yeah. I love it. Congratulations. <laughs> Wonderful yeah. 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 Thanks, guys. So um, I'll see you next month. <laughs> All right. Yes. And I, I promise to get notice out on time and have the meeting on our regularly scheduled meeting date. Um, and that will be on Monday, November 16th. November 16th, Monday. Okay. I'll write that down. Bye guys. Bye. Bye Michelle. Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Anything else um, that we need to discuss before we adjourn for the day? Thank you, Molly, for joining us. And I, um, I imagine you inherited a, a fair amount of um, paperwork, et cetera, from Sarah. So, but <laughs> if, if you have any questions or, or would like, like, I don't know if you have um, the establishment and everything of this commission, but I can definitely get all that to you. Yeah, that was going to be one question I had. Any materials that you are able to send would be helpful. Um, you know, I'm, get, I'm getting caught up to speed on the several new boards and whatnot um, while trying to hire more staff into the office. Um, but so anything you have, I'd be happy to review. And uh, this meeting, I know I, I wasn't um, very vocal and can't vote still or anything like that, but um, this was helpful and gave good background on, on the commission. And I look forward to, to next month. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And we, we are um, losing members. So I, I um, believe I can say that uh, if, we have a motion to adjourn that we would have all in favor of adjournment. So moved. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paul. And um, I will see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Great weekend. Bye, everybody.